Um, thanks, everybody, for joining us for this statewide um, locally coordinated plan update public workshop. Um, this is one of three public workshops we are hosting to um, provide input um, and, and background on the um, locally coordinated plan update and the process to identify gaps and, and needs in the um, existing transportation network, especially for seniors and people with disabilities. Um, your input is very important to us, and we hope that um, this session here will provide some good information for you. And then as a reminder, and I think Kayla and Laura will remind you later in the, the workshop that we will have the, the survey link posted for you to make sure you've taken the, the survey if you haven't already. Um, and then um, a link to the virtual room, which has other project documents and other information. And then um, recordings of this meeting and um, other information will also be posted in that virtual room as well. Um, so thank you for attending and I guess I'll hand it over to Laura or Kayla. Yeah, sure. You can hand it over to me, Hart. Hart, did you introduce yourself? I don't know if you did. Oh, no, I don't think I did. Sorry. <laughs> um, my, my name is Hart Evans, and apologies, I'm having technical difficulties, I guess. So you can't see me, and I can't see you. So um, I am the statewide planning and program manager over here at the North Carolina Department of Transportation's Integrated Mobility Division. Um, we are leading the effort to update this plan. Um, in the past, it has been the local transit agencies and different rural planning organizations updated um, their own plans. Um, that was a cumbersome process and, you know, required 50 to 75 different plans. So we decided to take it upon ourselves to do a statewide plan to, um, you know, reduce the burden for all those different um, small agencies. Thank you. Thank you, Hart. Um, so again, welcome everyone to this the second virtual workshop uh, or meeting on the statewide locally coordinated plan for fiscal years 2025 through 2029. We're excited that you're here. And just kind of to give you an overview of the agenda, um, we're going to start with, we've kind of started with some introductions. We're going to go over some housekeeping and then give you an overview of what the project is, some of the data that we have already started gathering a little overview of our engagement activities, how we're engaging with the community, and then we're going to open it up to questions from the group. So um, by way of introductions, I am Laura Everett. I work for a consulting firm named Benish, and uh, we were hired by the North Carolina Department of Transportation to assist Hart and his team with putting this study together. And you will hear later from Kayla Hutton. She is also from Benish and part of our project team. And then Chris Wolf from Benish is also on the line and he's providing technical support in the background. So um, with that, that's our introductions and we'll talk a little bit about housekeeping. So we're going to keep everyone on mute and ask everyone to stay on mute this morning throughout the entire presentation. And that's one, because we're recording it and two, just for the, the benefit of everyone else on the call. And so if you'll keep that muted, it actually may also help if you turn off your camera. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and turn mine off so that you can focus on the uh, slides. Um, the turning off the camera just kind of helps with the bandwidth for folks so they can uh, focus on the slides a little easier. And then um, in terms of questions, we are going to open up to questions at the end. Um, as we go through, though, at any time, you can feel free to submit a question under the Q&A button. So the Q&A button is enabled, not the chat. So you can submit questions there. If um, we can answer it quickly, we will do so back to you in the chat. And um, if it's a more complicated question that we'll save toward the end, we'll open it up, we'll go through each question, and we'll respond to it. So feel free to keep adding to that question list as we go through the meeting but we'd love to get those in the uh, chat box so we have a record and, or excuse me, through the Q&A button so we have a record and can respond to them at the end. And then we're also going to be doing some polling, just a little bit of interaction throughout the meeting. So we'd love for you to participate in the polls. And so with that, we're going to start our first poll. I'll go ahead and um, launch that. And it's just uh, a simple uh, question about how you interact with transit. And so uh, we've given you a few different options. 
uh, whether you actually are a rider yourself, do you ride transit? Do you have clients perhaps that use transit? Perhaps you work with a dialysis center or something where you have clients who use transit or a family member that uses transit, um, or you, maybe you work in a transit or transit related field and then other, uh, just so we know who we're talking to this morning, that would be helpful. And um, it should be appearing on your screen. Everyone's Zoom uh, dashboard is a little different depending on how you have it set up, but hopefully it, the poll popped up on your screen. I see folks uh, providing responses. Um, and I think we've got 26 out of 31 participants. So other than our project team, that's probably, um, oh, we get a few more. I'll give you two more seconds to respond and then I will end the poll. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll now and share the results. And so our largest group of individuals are in the category of having clients that use transit, which is great. We're, we appreciate that you're here to represent your clients who use transit. Uh, then we have a group of folks in the other category um, a few folks who work in transit, a few transit riders, and a few folks who have family members who ride transit. So thank you for sharing. We've got a great um, kind of diverse group of individuals on the call. And with that, we'll go to the next slide and kind of jump into what we'll be talking about today in terms of essentially what is a locally coordinated plan. Um, so a locally coordinated plan is a, a federal requirement, a requirement of receiving federal funding. And it is related to enhancing mobility of seniors and individuals with disabilities. So when a state is uh, seeking federal funding um, under the 5310, program, which is the Enhancing Mobility of Seniors and Individuals with Disabilities program, when they're seeking funding under that program, they have to prepare a locally coordinated plan. And uh, under this plan, there are recipients who can receive funding from the 5310 funding pool. And those could be transportation planning agencies, they can be transportation providers themselves, whether on the public sector or the private sector. It could even be human services providers. There's a number of different folks who can receive funding through the 5310 program. I will note that as Hart mentioned, this program or our study today is statewide. It is looking at North Carolina from coast to all the way to the Western reaches, um, but only the rural areas. The urban areas are going to conduct their own locally coordinated plan individually. But for the rural areas, instead of everyone having to do their own plan, uh, NCDOT has taken on that task for the entire state rural areas. And so with that, we'll move to the next slide and talk a little bit about, so here is our, uh, our study area, the entire state of North Carolina. And what we've done is divide it into regions. There are 10 different reg regions that we will be looking at individually this just helps us when we're looking at data, when we're looking at input from the public to understand the, the different needs of these areas. Because you can imagine there are differences among uh, individuals or areas across the state. So we wanted to divide it up and make sure that we were looking at solutions that would fit for all sorts of uh, different folks across the state. So that's kind of our study area. And now just to keep talking about what is a locally coordinated plan. As I said, it's a requirement of receiving federal funding. There are some required elements to the plan. So uh, those include, we have to do an assessment of all of the currently available transportation services um, in the state of North Carolina in the rural areas. So we're gonna look to see what services are being provided today. And then we're going to be looking at what are the needs of seniors and individuals with disabilities across the state so that we understand um, what services are out there, what are the needs of the individuals out there, and where there might be gaps between the services being provided and the needs of the individuals out there. And so once we understand what those gaps are, we can design strategies that address those gaps. And so our job is to understand where the services, where needs are not being met, design strategies to meet those needs. And then we're going to prioritize 
those strategies for implementation. Of course, North Carolina doesn't have unlimited resources, so we have to prioritize how we implement those services over time um, with the limited resources, whether those limited resources be funding or staffing. So um, we will be doing that as we move through the project. It also requires participation by the public. So thank you for helping us meet that requirement. In particular, we're, we need to have participation by older adults and persons with disabilities. So uh, we are focused on those groups throughout. And so looking at the next slide, um, just a, more of a visual representation of this project again, where we're doing going to do some research on what sort of funding is out there, what those what that funding is being used for, what those services being provided are, where are the needs of the individuals, where are those needs not being met by the current services, then we'll design some strategies to meet those needs, and then uh, finally prioritize those uh, strategies, those solutions over time, and then document the entire thing. So that's our overview of our process and our project today. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kayla to talk a little bit more about the 53 funding and what it can be used for and how it's used across the state. So, thank you. Thanks, Laura. Um, so yeah, like Laura said, we're going to talk a little bit more about 5310 funding. Um, so 5310 funding is federal, like uh, Laura has said, um, and that's kind of our shorthand for it. Um, and it's funding dedicated to enhancing the mobility of seniors and individuals with disabilities. It is a formula funding based on proportion of the older adults and individuals of, with disabilities in the state. So that means that the federal government looks at the number of older adults and the number of individuals with disabilities as a proportion to the total state population. And then it decides the amount of funding that it will give to the state of North Carolina. Um, and the, gover or the federal government provides that funding to uh, North Carolina's Department of Transportation, and then they distribute the funding amongst the small urban and rural areas. Um, North Carolina's uh, Department of Transportation, which we may uh, refer to it as NCDOT, um, does have some flexibility and uh, how it chooses projects to fund every year, um, but that process does have to be clearly defined and stated. Um, so that's kind of our overview of the federal uh, 5310 funding program. Um, so we wanted to give you a little bit of examples of what these funds may go towards. Um, there's a pretty big range of variety of things that it may go towards. Um, and this is just a few examples. This is not at all uh, this is not a comprehensive list. Um, it could be used for vehicles. Um, and with that, it means that uh, an agency could choose to purchase a bus or a van. Um, it could be amenities for a vehicle as well, like a wheelchair ramp or a lift. Um, this funding source could also be used for software, uh, like scheduling software to help the agency better schedule trips. Um, other uses include travel training, which is where individuals help older adults or individuals with disabilities learn how to use the transit system. It could be used to maybe build an accessible path to a bus stop, improve signage. Um, additionally, uh, it could be used to purchase transportation, which means you can contract with an agency to provide the services. Um, so that's just a few different ways that it could be used. Um, so now that we talked a little bit about the federal 5310, which is kind of our main potatoes for this meeting, um, we just want to talk a little bit about the state program. Um, and so North Carolina has state funds that are similar in nature, uh, that also pro provide funding for, um, similar, uh, populations. Um, it's called the Rural Operating Assistance Program. Um, we may refer to it as ROPE. And uh, it also uses a formula to calculate how much funding is provided. Um, the recipients are county governments or transportation authorities in the state of North Carolina. And this uh, program also has a planning requirement. So this plan will meet that. Um, so talking a little bit more about that. Oops, sorry, I thought I would hit the next slide, but I didn't. 
Um, so talking a little bit more about that, there's three distinct funding streams. Um, there's the Elderly and Disabled Transportation Assistance Program, which is like the 5310 federal program we've talked about. Um, there's an Employment and Transportation Assistance Program that is geared towards getting people connected to the workforce. And there's a rural general public program, which is focused on providing funds for individuals who live in rural areas. So um, those are our two main focuses of our study. Um, and so we wanted to look at similarities and differences between 5310 and ROPE. Um, big difference is one's a federal, other one's a state. Um, the 5310 funding has a minimum requirement to be spent on capital, um, and there's some additional match requirements, whereas the ROPE funding is really specific to North Carolina and has a few different funding streams, as we just discussed. Um, but they're both intended to support mobility for seniors and individuals with disabilities. Um, they can both be used in some ways for operations funding. Um, there are some local match requirements. Um, so that's kind of an overview of the funding streams. Um, and now we're gonna talk a little bit about the socioeconomic data that we've reviewed so far. Um, so these uh, characteristic population characteristics that you're about to see, um, they're derived from census data. Um, and then after the census uh, data, we will also discuss some transit impacts. Um, like we've said before, the plan covers the entire state. So there's a lot of data to look at. And just as a reminder, the study focuses on the small urban and rural areas. So those larger urbanized areas of more than 200,000 people are excluded. Um, so the map that we're looking at right now um, shows the population per square mile. The blues that you're seeing, those show the lower population densities, and those are found clustered near that east part of the state and specifically in northeastern areas such as Birdie, Halifax, Washington, Tyrell, Hyde, Gates, and Dare counties. And in the southeast, the lower population density areas are found in Craven, Jones, Sampson, Bladen, and Columbus counties. Other areas with lower population densities are also found in West North Carolina and Allegheny, Wilkes, Ash, Caldwell, Madison, Swain, Graham, and Cherokee counties. And the higher population densities, which are shown in the reds, so that kind of darker red, um, as well are found adjacent to those large urbanized areas with more than 200,000 people. And those areas are mainly clustered in central North Carolina. So this map shows the proportion of older adults um, per census tract throughout North Carolina. Higher concentrations, which we're defining um, as 30% or as 30% or more are found near the coast in uh, Beaufort, Pimlico, Carteret and Brunswick counties. There are pockets of very high concentration areas with more than 50% of older adults in the central part of the state in uh, Hoke County. Clusters of older adults are also observed in the Western portion of North Carolina with the majority of counties containing areas where at least one in five older adults are older than 65. So next we have a map that shows the proportion of individuals with disabilities. This map reflects anyone of any age with any disability. In East North Carolina, areas that have uh, one in four people with a disability are near the coast in Gates, Hertford, Birdie, Dare, Craven, Jones, and Pender counties. And in the Western portion of North Carolina, we see them in Ash, Wilkes, Burke, and Rutherford counties that have pockets with that high concentration of individuals with disabilities. Um, most of the central part of the state has areas that range from 11 to 20 percent uh, of individuals with disabilities per census tract. So, as we just saw, North Carolina is a pretty big state with a diverse population. There are 98 transit systems that serve almost 42 million riders in 2022. Of that, three and a half million rides were in small urban areas and 2.7 million were rural riders. Transit also supports jobs. Um, overall in the whole state, it supports around 12,600 jobs, um, but in the areas that we're focused in, 
1,800 are supported by rural workers and just under 1,931 to be specific, they're supported by small urban area workers. So now we're gonna go to a poll. So this should pop up on your screen, just like the first one. Um, we wanna know how often you use transit if you do. Um, maybe you use it every day, you're a commuter, uh, maybe you use it weekly, um, every once in a while, um, like every few months, possibly use it monthly, maybe never. Um, maybe you're on this call to learn more about transit so you can become a rider. So this will help us with some context of who's on the call. So I'll give you a few more seconds to get those in. Thank you so much to those that have. Let's give like five more, five to 10 more seconds. Okay, looks so oh, never mind. We're getting a few more in. Okay. I'm gonna end the poll and share. Um so most of you, um, 58% have never used transit. Um, and then it looks like 17%, almost one in five of you use it weekly. Um, then the next 13% of you every few months. We've got some monthly riders and we got one daily rider. So thank you for sharing. I'll stop sharing this poll. Um, then the next poll for those that use transit, what is your top trip purpose? And you could still respond to this, um, whether or not you use transit. Let's say maybe you're thinking about using it. So would you use it to get to work? Maybe you're in school. Um, maybe skip the drive to go to shop. Um, maybe you're headed to a social service center, a senior center, um, possibly a non-emergency medical destination, maybe a hospital or dialysis, or maybe you have something else in mind for those other trips. So we're getting up there on who's participating. So I'll give you a few more seconds. Few more trickling in. Okay, I think. Oh, every time I say that, someone <laughs> enters. Okay, I think we're good um, to end the poll. And we'll share the results. So, uh, looks like most people um, have other things in mind um, if they're already taking transit or they would take transit. Next is non-emergency medical destinations. About 17% of you agreed. That's where you would go. And we have a tie for senior centers and shopping. Um, next, we have school, about 8%, and work, 4%. So thank you for sharing. It's also good to know for, for this plan. So I'll stop sharing this. Um, Next, we wanna know, do private on-demand services exist in your areas? Um, example that we have in there is like Uber, Lyft, but we're just looking for anything um, that's not like public transportation um, that's operated by uh, the county or the state. So it could be another private entity is what I'm trying to say. So lots of good answers rolling in. Looks so far, looks like most of you do have that service option in your area. Give you a few more seconds to think about it. Yes, no, or maybe you're not sure. Maybe you haven't even seen these services around. So unsure if they exist in your side of the state. Okay, so we'll end that poll and share the results. Yep, 
And it looks like, like I said, most of you, 70%, do have those private on-demand services as an option in your area. 17% um, of you said that you are not sure. There, or sorry, 17% of you said no, that they don't exist in the area. And 13% of you said that you're not sure if they're available. So thank you for letting us know. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about our engagement activities that uh, we're currently doing for this project or that we plan to. Um, we've got an online survey, a virtual room, and a public workshop, which of course you're participating in today. Um, so the online survey, the uh, link will pop up in a second. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more, but we're really excited. Um, we already have over 1,200 responses. Um, so we're really excited that we're getting a lot of input across the state. Um, thank you for taking the survey, um, if you already have. So next. Um, so this is our virtual room. Uh, this is where we keep our data, other information, maps, um, presentations. This, will, this recording will go in this virtual room. Um, so there's a QR code on that um, slide and you can use your phone camera to scan it. And if you do, it'll take you to this virtual room. And throughout this project, we're going to um, put additional information there. Uh, we'll put documents um, so you can follow along and eventually the final report will be posted there. Um, also, as you can see, you can click to take the survey um, if you haven't already done so. Um, we encourage you to visit the virtual room um, to see what's going on, see get any updates. Um, but uh, we would like to get the word out about the survey as well. Uh, we'd like to have a lot of, as many responses as we can. Let's see, sorry, this thing's. Okay, so now we want to know, um, how did you hear about our workshop? Um, did you hear about it through an email, maybe a colleague, a newspaper article, radio, um, TV segment? Um, maybe you're not sure how you heard it. Give you a few more seconds. Thank you for your active participation. So we'll see if anyone else rolls in. If not, we'll end the poll in a few seconds. Okay. So then we'll share. Um, looks like most 71% you received an email, which that's great. Uh, a quarter of you said that a friend or a colleague let you know about this meeting, and then 4% said other. So thank you for letting us know. We're always looking for ways to promote this. Um, have you, next poll is, have you visit our virtual room? Um, we are looking to uh, get people in there, looking at the data that we've analyzed. Um, presentations. Um, uh, we do have a coordinating committee. So the presentation that's in there right now is kind of a background um, that was shown to the coordinating committee. And our coordinating committee is um, made up of members throughout the state. We wanted to make sure everyone was represented. Um, somebody from an RPO and a transit agency from each of those LCP districts that uh, Laura showed you that map at the beginning, those are included. Okay, so a few more seconds, but looks like most of you have responded, which thank you again. So we'll end the poll. Looks like 70, oh, let me show you the results. Uh, looks like 75% of you have not visited the room, so please go do so, we'd really appreciate it. 25% um, of you have, so thank you again. Um, really excited with the level of participation that we've had. I'll stop sharing. Um, and then next poll is we want to know, have you taken our survey? Um, like I said earlier, we had 1,200 responses. So we are so happy with that. Um, but North Carolina is a big place. We'd like to get as many people um, 
involved as we can. Um, so answers are yes, no, or maybe you're not sure. Um, there's a lot of surveys out there. So um, maybe you're, maybe you've seen another one. So a few more rolling in. Again, thanks for your active participation in all these polls. Give it a few more seconds since some are rolling in. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll. So it looks like most of you, 54% have not taken our survey. So please, please go do so. We'd love to hear from you. Um, thank you to the 38% who already have. And those that, um, the 8% that aren't sure, please go check it out. And if you have not taken it, please take it like we said. Um, so I'm gonna, oh, oh, I didn't share that. I'm sorry, um, I'll share those results for a second. So uh, like I said, 54% um, had not taken it and 38% did and 8% aren't sure. Okay, so um, now let's talk about where are we headed, our next steps. Um, this survey is gonna be open until September 28th. So please um, take it, like I said, please send it to your friends. Um, and so just want to make sure we get that out there. Um, our current schedule is to wrap up the plan in early 2024. Um, and in that January, February timeframe, we will have it published for you in that virtual room. So that's where we're headed. 